multi-criteria evaluation for suitability analysis. You notice here in the title I have multi-criterion or multi-criteria. Both are the same thing. Depends on the authors who are talking about it. Sometimes they call it multi-criterion. Sometimes they call it multi-criteria. Two words for the same thing. The data that we'll be using will be in the lecture 5.zip folder in module 5 for the examples in this particular um, module. So what is multi-criteria evaluation? MCE for short. Or it could also be called multi-criteria analysis, MCA. Um, this is something you do all the time that you don't even know that you're doing it. And it's just the idea of having multiple criteria, considering multiple things in order to meet some objective. And here's an example of a decision. You have a decision that I want a coffee. And the decision frame then is all the different places that sell coffee. Second cup, Starbucks, Bridgehead, etc. So you have the decision, I want a coffee, and then the decision frame is all the possible coffee stores or cafes that you could go to to get that coffee. Then you consider to yourself, well, what factors do I want to take into account in order to get my coffee? Factors are things like which of the decision, um, decision frame alternatives, like Second Cup, Starbucks, etc., are closest, which have the best prices, which have the nicest atmosphere. Um, also, how far do you feel like going to get that coffee? Will you drive for five minutes, ten minutes, or will you walk for five minutes? Let's say you're willing to walk for five minutes. So then you have to use some sort of measure in order to assess each of the decision frame alternatives. And that measure in this case has to be some standardized measure and, and it could be distance, for example. So distance is a standardized measure because it's distance. We can measure it all in meters. So we could say, okay, well, this is how far in meters each one of these things are, or time is probably more relevant here. So we could say, everything in terms of time so we could standardize time um, in terms of how long it takes to walk to each of these we could standardize the atmosphere somehow so you could rate the your preference for each of the different coffee stores and then you have to make some sort of decision as to what's more important to you is, is the atmosphere more important is the cost more important is the distance more important so you do that and you could say, okay, well, distance is the most important to me right now, or time. So that could be also time here. Time or distance. So you give it a weight of half. And then you give 0.2 to the cost. Because time is more important than cost. And the atmosphere where you're going to enjoy your coffee is 30%. And you'll see these add up all to 1. So 0.5 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 equals 1. So then you do that. You multiply those values all together, and you get the set for the decision. In this case, it comes out to be bridgehead coffee. And you can see that's quite a formal way of thinking about things, isn't it? You don't do that consciously, right? You think, well, I want a coffee. Mm, there's, you know, here's second cup. It's a little closer, you know, um, Starbucks a little bit further, so, you know, um, but I really like Starbucks better, but at the same time, you know, I don't know, and then you make some decision. But you're really using multi-criteria evaluation. So it's something you do all the time, and here we have a formalized way of looking at it, but you don't sit down and um, compute things like this for every decision you have to make. So in this uh, multi-criteria evaluation, we have these main, these are the main actors, the decision, and that's the decision frame, for example, we call it the frame. So the decision frame, and this is all under some objective, like I want a cup of coffee. So our decision frame would be the alternatives that we're looking at. And in the case of spatial data analysis, 
the alternatives are usually a raster layer or a region or you know all the cells in a region so in our decision we have that alternatives these are the where our decision can act upon to decide which of those things are relevant and then you have criteria these are the basis for assigning a particular alternative to a decision set so just like with the coffee example our basis for assigning a particular coffee shop to the decision set was distance um, atmosphere and cost so these are called factors in multi-criterion evaluation or multi-criterion analysis or micro, micro, multi-criterion decision analysis so factors are the basis for assignment to the decision set so these are the factors we take into account the things we think about and constraints are things that limit our um, decision set basically so obviously if you're if you're thinking of you know a couple of coffee places you you're not thinking outside of let's say a certain distance or time away from you you're not thinking of going from from campus let's say to um, Canada just to get your coffee right so you, you you inherently think of some thing that limits or constrains your decision set so our factors constraints and then we have the decision rules and that's how we combine the criteria and factors constraints into a single index that we can then use to um, assign each of the locations to the decision set and that includes a function some sort of often a mathematical function for comparing alternatives or a choice heuristic a procedure for uh, that you follow for getting the answer that you're trying to find for the objective of let's say getting a cup of coffee the choice function is how you would formally put those together and you can have one or the other and or a mix of both of these things most of the time you're just using a heuristic a heuristic is just a some sort of procedure you follow that works best for you for doing things in real life uh, most of the time in multi-criterion decision analysis we're going to be using choice functions so actually mathematically combining things together now the seminal work for multi-criterion decision analysis m c d a um, which is the same as multi-criteria evaluation just a, a different slightly different word to it is the uh Malowski and reiner that's a 2015 book multi-criterion decision analysis and as long as you're logged into the university system you can uh, look at that book and download chapters and there's a chapter in the for that you need to read parts of within the module uh, five here so let's look at a, another example with spatial data so our objective is prime agricultural land so identifying prime agricultural land our decision frame will be um, which locations are suitable or unsuitable for prime agricultural production then we have a candidate set of locations so we present basically a region all the cells let's say within a raster within a region as locations that can be considered for being suitable or unsuitable and then after we apply our decision rules we get a decision set that these cells are suitable and these other cells will be unsuitable for example so that's all in the decision aspect of things and then we determine okay what are the criteria that determine suitability for prime agricultural land so the factors are the things that enhance or detract from suitability of an alternative for example suitable land must be at low elevations the lower the better so it can be these can be somewhat vague statements sometimes and you have to figure out okay well what does that mean exactly so suitable land is at low elevation so we need something with elevation elevation would be a factor then constraints these limit where you search for alternatives 
So suitable land must be below 400 meters in elevation. So anything above 500 meters is, is not looked at at all. It is constrained from the analysis. Just like if you go back to that coffee example, if you're on campus, you don't think of going all the way to Canada to get your coffee. You're going to think of places that are closer together. So you, you have these constraint. This, it's an it's a unconscious constraint. It's a logical constraint. But you don't necessarily particularly think about Canada when you're thinking about getting a cup of coffee. Um, another thing, suitable land must be on at least two, uh, at least two he hectares in size. So that's another constraint. So only contiguous regions that are two hectares in size would be considered for prime agricultural land because you need that much land for for production, you know, to get machinery to work it and stuff like that. So our factors, our criteria, are factors and constraints. And sometimes they kind of mix, you know, they mix each other. For they're a little bit mixed um, in that the constraints themselves are will define both the factor and the constraint, particularly with Boolean um, relational operators, for example. So here, for example, we have factors. Um, factors define the degree of suitability for all geographic regions within the candidate set. So the candidate set here is this region and all the cells in the region. And we can look at things like slope, for example. Well, high slope is not good for agriculture, so anywhere that's red here would be a constraint. So we constrain ourselves just to the green areas that you see in, in this region here. So as an example, uh, suitable agriculture is best in a flat in flat lands, the flatter the better. So we'd have to say, okay, well, you know, the most suitable would be the flattest regions, and the least suitable would be the um, red, red regions that we see here. So we go from degree slope to some st standardized means of suitability that goes in this particular from 0 to 255 possible values. So we transform one variable, its scale of measurement, into a standard measure that can be used for all uh, factors that we're considering. Constraints look like this. Constraints are most often Boolean layers. So here's an elevation constraint. So elevation above 400 is in blue. So that's greater than 400. And less than 400 is in red. Uh, not red, but green here, I should say. So we don't even bother looking in the blue areas for candidates. That constrains our analysis just to the green area here. Uh, for example, suitable land must be below 400 meters in elevation and two hectares in size. So if we look here and we look at the land cover type, the land covers that we have, we might find, okay, well, we also have a constraint then for our regions. So green stuff here, all the green stuff is greater than, um, let's, let's say three hectares, I think I made it three here, three hectares in size, and the gray is not um, suitable land for some other reason, but anything gray, uh, or blue I should say here, anything blue is not big enough to be considered for prime agricultural production because it's too small of a landscape parcel. And you see little parcels here that are available. So this just happens to be the available parcels and some are green, some are blue. So then we have our decision rule. How do we combine these different factors together? So our factors again were the elevation, the size of parcels, the size of landscape units. So we have relational operations we could use within a decision rule. Uh, then we have conditional. So that's our Boolean and or not exclusive or. Uh, we have linear combinations. So A plus B, for example, where here A and B equal obviously algebra, uh, raster layers as map algebra. We have weighted linear combinations where each is multiplied by a weight before they are either summed or otherwise used in a arithmetic formula. And we even have fuzzy ways to look at things like um, fuzzy and and fuzzy or. 
and we'll see those as well. So we have a lot of different things we can choose from when thinking about how to decide the way in which we will combine the layers into something which is usable or that will select out of our candidate set the prime agricultural regions. So the MCE method, the multi-criterion evaluation or multi-criterion decision analysis, is first we identify a decision frame based on an objective. So remember an objective is always up here. So the objective is the overriding thing that we're interested in finding out about like prime agricultural land. We identify the decision frame, which is the region and the locations of interest. Then we determine the criteria, which are factors or constraints. And sometimes there, everything is, is a factor and a constraint at the same time with Boolean layers, for example. It shows, because Boolean layer shows one as the factor and zero as the constraint. So they're all in the same layer. Then we choose a algorithm. That's the decision rule. And within the factors and constraints, we have to remember that we have to standardize all factors and constraints to the same scale of meaning. So the same ontological scale. And that could be dollars, it could be meters, it could be um, millimeters, it could be a relative unit, 1 to 10, 1 to 3, 1 to 5, that mean the same things for each of the individual factors or factors or constraints that go into the analysis, or at least each of the factors that go into the analysis as a minimum. And we also think about how we're going to weight each factor. Does each factor have the same weight in our decision-making process? So like I said with the coffee example, you know, is what's most important to you? Is it distance? Is it cost? Is it atmosphere? What's second most important? What's third most important? Or do they all have equal importance to you? That's called weighting of the factors. Then at the end, there is a sensitivity analysis that we, we can undertake. We can say which of the choices that we made in step A, B, or C can affect the outcome if they were modified. And usually, modifying anything um, in A, B, or C will affect the outcome and the prediction or the suitability, the, the um, candidate set of locations or the actual set of locations once they're no longer candidates, they've been chosen. So the decision set, strictly speaking.